Hey, what's up YouTube? Jeremiah Hersey here. And today is the second episode of the six part series I'm doing on virtual tables with inside of the Power BI desktop using DAX. Today we're gonna to be focusing on the add columns function. And so the add columns function creates a virtual table that we can add columns to. And we'll, we'll start to briefly talk about some of the concepts that I'm gonna discuss later on in episode four called data lineage. And so we'll talk about what that is very briefly, but I'll go into more detail in episode four. So let's go ahead and jump over into the Power BI file. If you wanna download it, just click the link below and you can download this file to follow along. So here we are inside of our Power BI desktop and I'm gonna go over here to my data view. And so the function that we're gonna be using is add columns. So add columns is an iterator function, which means it goes row by row with inside of a table. And so as it goes row by row with inside of that table, it's going to add an additional column inside of that in row context. And so row context means that it can only see one row at a time and any active relationships between the tables are going to not be visible. And so if we want to use filtering based on our relationships, we're going to have to add a calculate function to force context transition to occur to allow us to pull back the value we need. So let's go ahead and take a look at what that is. So we're gonna go up here to new table And I'll call this my add column table. So I'm gonna use the add columns function. If we look at the information, it returns a table with new columns specified by a DAX expression. So these DAX expressions could be measures that you use. Measures are implicitly wrapped with a calculate function, so it allows that context transition to occur, which is great in our case. So we're gonna use the add columns function here, and then we're gonna specify what table that we want to add columns to. So for this example, let's use our customer table. So I'm gonna use a single tick mark to call out to our customer table. Now we get to specify the name of the new column that we're going to be adding. So we can add multiple columns, so we're just gonna start with one here. And so we're gonna call this the total transactions. Okay, so that's gonna be the name of our column here. And then we're gonna define the expression for which this column is defined. And so we're just gonna use a count rows function. And we're gonna count the rows of the sales table. Now, what we're gonna see when we return this is that we're going to get a repeated value over and over again because we're in row context on the customer table and that active relationship is not able to be used. And so when we return this, we're gonna see that repeated value over and over again for our added column. So if we go all the way down here and look at total transactions, notice that we get the total number of rows with inside the sales table. Okay, so we are still inside of row context, similar to if you were creating a calculated column inside of DAX, very similar. And so if we want the filtering to occur based on the individual customer, we have to force context transition with a calculate function. So we're gonna go ahead and put in calculate here. Now you could also use a, a measure here as well. Measures are implicitly wrapped in a calculate function. And so if you had a total transactions measure that just counted the rows, you could also use that here as well. So what we'll see is as we force context transition to occur, we're now going to be allowed to pull back the individual transactions for each customer. And so if I click the drop down arrow here, we can see that we're gonna have multiple transaction numbers. So when you're using add columns, if you want filtering to occur, you're going to have to invoke context transition using that calculate function. Now we can also add multiple columns into this table. And so if I go down here to the second parentheses here, I'm gonna go ahead and just remove that last one, I'm gonna hit comma here. Notice that we now move into the second 
column that we're going to add. Name two, notice it's in square brackets. This means it is a optional parameter. We do not have to add the second column, but we can if we want to. And so let's go ahead and create a second column here and let's call this the forecast transactions. So that's gonna be the name of our column here, forecast transactions. And what we're gonna do is we're simply going to add 10 to the total um, from our count row. So whatever our total transactions are, we're gonna just go ahead and add the number 10 to it. And so I'm gonna, once again, allow context transition to occur. So I'm gonna use the calculate function here. And I'm still going to use the count rows function. And we're still counting the rows of the sales table. So all of that is still the same here. The only difference is we're now going to add 10 to it. And we'll go ahead and close up our parentheses here. Okay, so we should now have two new columns, total transactions and forecast transactions, which should be 10 numbers higher than our current transaction total. So we'll go ahead and click the check mark here to evaluate it. And as we scroll over here to the right, we're gonna see that that forecast is now happening. So it's adding 10 to whatever the total transactions are. So you can add multiple columns here, but notice that with inside of our table, right? We're having these repeated calculations. This is the same thing as the one right below it. And so because we have this, this expression with inside of here that is basically running the same thing over and over again, it's going to be better performing if we use a different combination of functions. So if you're going to have a repeated expression like you see here, so this is a repeated expression. We have calculate count rows of sales, calculate count rows of sales. So we're having this expression repeated over and over again. So if that's the case, if, if you have this repeated value, then what you wanna do with this expression is you wanna use a different combination of functions. So the combinations of functions that you would wanna use is the generate and the row function. This is going to allow us to establish a variable for this expression and then use it over and over again with inside of our calculation. So that's what we're gonna do here is we're gonna use a combination of the generate and the row function. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm just simply going to hold control and forward slash and I'm gonna comment this out. So I'm gonna start off with a variable. So I'm gonna call VAR to call it to a variable here. And I'll call this my customer table. And I'm just gonna use the values function. We talked about the values function in the last video. What it does, it allows us to create a one column table or an entire table with a list of distinct values here. So we're just gonna call out to our customer table we always have to type in return after a variable. And so now what we're gonna do here is we're gonna use the generate function. So the generate function, this is the second table expression with inside of it will it be evaluated for the first row of the table. So we're gonna use this to define a variable for our expression and then use that over and over again. So we're gonna use the generate function and what's our table? Well, that's gonna be that table we define, the customer table. All right, so with this, we can now invoke a variable for our expression. So we're gonna type in VAR. I'm gonna call this my total transactions. Okay, I'm just gonna abbreviate it here. So that variable, right, that repeated value was calculate, count rows, of the sales table. Okay, so what we're doing here is we're defining the variable with inside of this generate function here. And then we can define the next variable, which is going to be 
the next column with inside of our table. So I'm going to call this future trans for our future transactions. And now instead of having to write out that calculate function again, I'm just going to call out to my total transactions variable plus 10. And this is going to give us a lot better performance if you're going to have these repeated expressions with inside. Okay, so once again, we have to type in return after variables. And then what we're going to return here is the row function. So the row function returns a single row table with new columns specified. So the columns that we're going to use here are the two variables. So we're going to say this is going to be our total transactions column. And the variable that we're going to use here is just the total transactions variable. Then we're going to put in our second value here, which is going to be future transactions. And we're going to use the variable we created for that, which is the future transactions. Then we're going to close up that row function, close up our generate function, and then we can go ahead and return this. So if you're going to have this repeated expression over and over again, the generate function using the row function will allow you to return those results in a way that's going to perform better. Notice we're getting the same exact results, but by using variables, we're going to get better performance with inside of that measure or calculated column that you're creating. So one thing that I stated before is that we need to talk about thing called data lineage. Now add columns does not preserve data lineage. And so basically it means it cannot reference back to where the data is located. So when you add this column, it has no reference from where that data is located. We'll talk about more in episode four when we really dive into data lineage. I want to thank you so much for joining me. And if you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more content. And I'll see you in the next one.